chapter 37. Thus began a series of heroic feats by Maniac McGee. At 20 paces, he hit a telephone pole with a, a stone 61 times in a row. When the once a week freight train hit Elm Street, he started running from Oriole Street dead end on one rail and beat the train to the park, no sweat. He took off his sneaks and socks and walked, nonchalant as you please, through the rat infested dump at the foot of Rako Hill. The mysterious hole down by the creek, the one you would never reach into unless you dropped your most valuable possession into it, he stuck his hand in, his arm in, all the way to the elbow, kept it there for the longest 60 seconds on record, and pulled it out, dirty, but still full of fingers. He climbed the fence at the American bison pen at the zoo. He had suggested this feat himself, everyone else scoffing. And while the mother looked on, kissed the baby buffalo. So it went through February and March of that year, a feat a week. To much of the town hearing about these things, it was simply a case of the legend adding to itself, doing what legends do. To Russell and Piper McNabb, it was a case of boosting their importance even higher in the eyes of the other kids. Was it not at the brothers' direction that Maniac McGee performed these deeds? And who, after all, is the more amazing, the lion or the tamer? As for Maniac, he understood early on that he was being used for the greater glory of Piper and Russell. He also understood that without him, they would not be going to school every day. For the McNabs, there was nothing free about public education. A tuition had to be paid. Every week, Maniac paid it. And besides, he loved to meet the challenges they cooked up for him. And then one day, they gave him the most perilous challenge of all. They dared him to go into the East End. 